Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, happy Thursday. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time uh, where we can relax and craft and we work on a project together from beginning to end. And we work on it every uh, evening here for about an hour. Uh, right now we are working on the Charming Chevrons Quilt by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. I encourage you to click the link for her website and for her pattern in this Facebook post. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube for the replay on Penguin and Fish movies, it will be in that post as well. So this is the pattern. It is cute little zigzaggy chevrons. We are in the at the point that we're making half chevrons. So we have a big chain piecing thing happening here. So chain piecing is when you just keep sewing from one to the next and it ends up being in this long chain. And if we open one of these up, we will have our half of a chevron. So there's half of our V. And eventually we'll make the other direction one. So there we go. Combined, we will have a V. <laughs> so you see that V going there. So uh, once we combine all our Vs, we will have our cute little chevrony zigzags that are in uh, the pattern here. So all each little V is going to be a whole a whole thing that we're sewing together. So we're going to finish the the first half of the V's tonight. We have a few more to sew, to sew here, and then we are going to press them because we have to press them open. We have to take them off of the sewing machine as well, and I'll be doing that fun little trick for snipping all of these threads apart. We'll be using that trick with the, uh, with the seam ripper stuck on the top of a thread spool. So I think that'll be fun. All right. Okay, so yours looks like mine. Those offset edges, yes. So uh, you'll be perfectly fine. Um, you'll be perfectly fine when we sew it all together, Gretchen. I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, and you know, if you do have a question, if you want to share a photo of what you're working on, or if you have a question about a particular part, feel free to take a photo of it and post it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on Facebook. Uh, we have a great group there and um, I'll be able to help you out there or I'm sure someone else will uh, as well if you have a question. So, all right, we will be working more on these chains. And we talked about yesterday about uh, cleaning my machine since it's getting kind of fuzzy. And uh, I think we're not gonna do that tonight. I think tomorrow would be a really fun thing to do that on though. So tomorrow we'll be done with this first half chevron. So we will clean the machine. So I'll take the bobbin out, we'll, we'll dust it all out with a brush. And I think we might even uh, oil it. So we'll oil the machine. I'm trying to take care of my sewing machine a little bit more than usual. So I'm, I'm a newbie to oiling, <laughs> oiling and cleaning it. Uh, so we'll do that. And I think uh, we'll probably get a new needle on there as well. Uh, getting it all good to go before we start the other half of the chevrons. We have a whole nother pile to do for the other half. So, okay, I am going to flip you around and we'll get going. I'm getting tangled up in the, this chain already here. So thanks again for joining me, everyone. How can I sew and watch comments at the same time? Uh, and luckily, the phone that the comments are on is directly in my line of sight. <laughs> so I'm kind of looking past it a little bit to sew. Uh, so I can uh, see, see the comments kind of go by and, and when a new one comes up, I see movement and then I glance quick and can read it. <laughs> uh, and I have been doing this for, you know, it's going on for three years now doing this in the evenings here. Gosh, it's been at least two years now. So yeah, we're in the, I think the third year of doing this. Okay, so I will, um, you know, we don't have that much left here, which is great. Um, we've placed them in the last step where I can just pull the top one down and it will be our matching half square triangle in the chevron, um, chevron uh, position already. So I'm gonna just grab the top two off the pile 
we'll fold it in half and we're going to sew that seam right there. We're not folding it in half, I'm just putting the putting them together. All right, lining up that edge. Even Kitty scratched a little if it's not completely lined up. Oh, Minneapolis was shining on the news tonight. Was it just all over the news? We're going to head down there. Uh, the husband and I tomorrow, I think we're going to spend the day the day downtown just checking out all the Super Bowl stuff. Um, there's stuff going on every single night, and uh, it, I hear it's starting to get packed already. Um, there are famous people in town, and I want to see if we can see anybody. That'd be cool. Uh, but yeah, so tomorrow we're going to just take off and, and have a Super Bowl Friday, basically. And I think my husband already has plans um, plans to go on Saturday. Actually, I think we might go Saturday morning again. And then I think he's going to be spending, uh, he's going to be hanging out on Friday night and Saturday night there, which will be kind of fun. Oh, look at this. I did not, I'm like, this feels weird. What's going on with this one? I didn't trim this one down, so let's do that quick. Um, I am going to iron these. So once, once I'm done with these chevrons, I'm going to cut them out and, uh, and give them a press right away. That's what we're going to be doing tonight. Um, all right. So you can see, this is what my, um, this is the before and after. Well, here we can do it the same way. So this is the before and after this we've pressed flat, but I didn't trim down the edge yet. So we still have our dog ears or kitty ears there yet. And you know, kind of a rough edge. It's kind of fraying a little bit and it's not our perfect four and a half inches. I just forgot it. I put it on the pile and forgot to trim it. So let's, let's do that trimming now before we sew it together. Uh, that diagonal there, I'm, this is my four and a half inch ruler. I'm going to place the diagonal on the ruler right on the diagonal seam. And I'm going to place it so that I have um, an edge all the way around it. And I have this, it's so nice having the ruler that's the exact size block that I need to end up with and this rotating cutting mat because then I can just hold it down, cut aside and keep rotating and I don't have to move my hand. I don't have to move the ruler. So it takes, it, it just goes a lot faster. So, oh, and then we're going to have fuzzles everywhere again. There, so I can just turn. Ruler has not moved. I'm just moving my hand. Little fuzzle out of the way. And the last side. But yeah, my edges weren't matching up. So if I would have sewn that with um, with all that extra edge and with the with the dog ears, it wouldn't have been the end of the world, right? We still would have ended up with our half chevron. Um, you know, maybe we'd clip a corner or something when we sew it later. But again, out of all these chevrons, if we have one tiny one that's a little goofy, no one's going to notice it. So I could probably have done it, but we trimmed it down. Now we're good. They're the exact same size. We got the chevron going in the right direction again, and we're in business again. Oh, a few years ago, you had the Super Bowl in Indianapolis, and it was so much fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, it wouldn't have been if I would have missed the whole thing. You know, that wouldn't have killed me or anything. <laughs> but I think it, it's neat. Like, I think the last time it was here was, you know, a couple decades ago. I'm not positive on that, but I think it was a it was a while ago, like 25 years or something like that. So I don't know if I'll be able to see another one. And uh, you know, it's it's Minneapolis, Minnesota, up the wazoo everywhere now. You know, all the all the booths, every everything that's down there, they want to show off Minnesota and all that. So I'm I'm kind of excited to see see what they've cooked up for all that stuff. Oh, it's gonna be like negative a bajillion outside though. So. Um, I was thinking maybe I will do a Facebook Live tomorrow when I'm down there. So uh, if you are free during the day sometime and, and not at work, you might see me pop on um, once or twice or something. Uh, 
while we're walking around. But I am gonna be super duper bundled. <laughs> Maybe I'll throw the phone on a tripod so I don't have to hold it with my with my uh, fingers freezing. Yeah, I'm not sure about the transit system. How I'm gonna how we're gonna get around yet? I don't. I was thinking about that a little while ago. I think. My husband is gonna want to drive into town and park somewhere, but I'm thinking, how are we gonna do that? <laughs> uh, we might just Uber it into town. We could actually drive to the Mall of America and then take the light rail into town. That might be kind of fun. Um, but that's like a whole nother step too. So I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what he says. I guess I don't care. He can decide. Yes, do give us, give us some d updates. We'd love to see what's going on. Oh, yeah. So I'm, uh, yeah, I think it'll be fun. I got to see where the kitty bowl is. I got to check out that area. <laughs> uh, I'm excited. Just, there, uh, you know, all the food trucks and everything are going to be down there so we'll have to eat some yummy food we have some great restaurants in town and and a lot of them started with being food trucks so i'm sure they'll have all all their yummies out everywhere um yeah i just you know i'm thinking clothing what am i gonna wear <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna have to wear long underwear then then clothing uh i think a couple long sleeve things. I have some outer pants, like windbreaker outer pants that are meant for winter. They're not quite sledding snow ski pants, but they're close. So uh, with the long underwear and those, I should be good. Man, I don't know what to do for... I might have to put on my full-on ski socks, my super duper wool ski socks. Um... I'll put my hiking boots on. Those are good walking boots, and I think they'll keep my feet warm if I got the the snow socks on. And then for sure, I'm gonna be wearing my hat that my fuzzy hat with the ear flaps that I can attach underneath my chin. That's like the must of the season. A super cold today. What about Sunday? Yeah, I think Sunday they were talking below zero with wind chill that it would be below zero. I don't think it's gonna be. It'll be like right near zero, but I think it's gonna be windy and super crappy outside, which I'm kind of excited about. Um, I'm excited about all the out of towners experiencing what real cold feels like. <laughs> it's not just chilly, it is take your breath away in a very literal sense. When you go outside, you feel the air sucked out of you because it's, it's so cold. Um, so that'll be interesting. <laughs> I'm curious to see, like, what people are ending up wearing and stuff. That'll be, that'll be interesting. But my mom was telling me about this place, uh, where you can go to their app, um, and you can, they, they sell, they sell those hats, like those, um, uh, like lumberjack, the red plaid hats with the ear flaps and the, and the fuzz. And you can, you know, so your ears can be super duper warm. Uh, I guess this company, they have an app or something. And then you can, um, say, oh my gosh, I need a hat. And then they will come and deliver a hat for you within 45 minutes, um, wherever you are. <laughs> so I almost want to do that just cause I think that's so interesting. Man, if there's a shirtless guy out there, he's gonna get frostbite within like 10 minutes. He's not gonna be happy. All right, that is it. That's our last half chevron. So now I want to get uh, that little tool out that we are playing with. So I have a little spool of floss here. And what we've been doing, this is kind of fun. I've been, this is my new, like exciting thing for me. Um, I've been taking a seam ripper and I've been putting putting it in the top of the 
the uh, spool of thread like this. And that's what we're gonna use to snip all these little threads. And you know what? It keeps sliding around. And you know what? I have some blue tape here. I'm gonna see if I can tape this guy down and have it be a little nicer for us. So, boop, we'll go right there. Oh yeah, that's gonna be better. <laughs> oh, you love this invention too. Yeah, all right, so then I can just snip right on the top and start my pile over here. Let's shimmy this over for, for the pile. All right, that tape's a little wobbly, but it's not, it's not, um, it's not sliding all over the table like it was all the other times. But it's just a little, little easier and a little faster than trimming them all. And it's just fun. <laughs> I like it. Definitely working taping it down a little bit better than it was. But yeah, the nice thing about chain piecing, which is again where we sew them all in a row like what we've been doing and with just connected by this tiny little bit of thread. Um, ooh, I'm tangled here now. But you use hardly any thread. Oh man, I'm all twisted. Let's see what we got going on here. When I pulled the, um, the chain of stuff out to show you guys at the beginning, I, uh, I think I got it all tangled. So, well, you know what? The nice thing is, who cares if I'm tangled? All I have to do is keep snipping. So even if I'm tangled up, it doesn't matter. It's all going to get separated when I snip. So I just, I just picked it up and started in the middle somewhere. Bonnie, I think the ruler grips would probably work really, really well. I just don't really want to waste one on, on this little spool of thread because I like my, I like those grips so much. But um, if you had a dedicated spool or something, that would be perfect, I think. One of those little ruler, the true grip ruler, ruler bits. What's, what was the size of the, the blended sampler blocks? I, they were six and a half inches, I believe, unfinished. So that means, unfinished just means that when it's not in the quilt. So um, with the raw edges, the size is six and a half inches for the splinted sampler quilt. And then once they're in the quilt, then they should measure six inches. I believe that's what it was. All right, so we got done with that one row and I just started this up in the middle. You know, we're, this is where we're all tangled, but it doesn't matter. I just have to keep snipping. There, that's where the tangle was. Ooh, we got a good stack going here. All right, and that's it. I can throw this away. We'll put it down here with the, my scraps. And uh, um, that is the fun little seam ripper gidgety gadget. All right, so we got our stack here now. Uh, so the, these, what I'm gonna do now is I need to iron them uh, open and we'll add them to our stack of half chevrons here. So we will have our complete stack of the chevron halves that are going in this direction. And then, you know, the next up is a whole nother stack of ones that go in this direction. So <laughs> at this point, we'll be like halfway done once we press all these open. So that's what we'll do tonight. And then, um, then tomorrow, we are gonna clean my sewing machine and oil it too, which is, I'm, I'm not 100% comfortable with that yet. I, uh, you know, I always, um, I always would just bring it into the sewing machine guy once, uh, you know, after a big project when I thought I needed it cleaned or, or worked on. Um, and then I would just get it back. But since the splendid sampler and uh, talking to all of you guys here, I've been trying to, trying to take care of it myself more. So I've been reading up on it and looking in the manual and um, I've been starting to do it myself and more often. And you know, it's been great. I just feel like I know the machine a little bit better. So uh, we'll go through kind of my process. I'm sure it can be improved. <laughs> uh, and I might be a little fumbly when I do the oiling, but I will get my little manual out 
and it shows all the places that I should be trying to oil it. And we'll, we'll clean it out with the little brush that comes with the machine and um, oil it up and then change the, the needle and give it a little test on a scrap, see if it's working. And uh, uh, you'll probably hear a difference. I mean, we'll, we've been sewing with this a, a while, so you probably have a little bit, a subtle idea of what the machine sounds like. And so I'm thinking once it's all cleaned up, it will sound just a hair smoother, a hair less like chunkier, like chunk, 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 a hair less like that. Uh, and, and that's, that makes me feel good. It makes me feel like we're doing something. Uh, Kimura is not hard to oil at all. I used the manual and did everything it said. Yeah, so that's that's my plan too. It kind of has the layout of what it, like a visual of you know all the motors and or whatever all the all the gadgets on the inside. I should learn what they're all called. I'm sure there's a list, but uh, you know it kind of points at where to put the aisle or the the oil, and I'll just put a little oil on all those parts. I think I might even turn it on its side and do the underneath area. That's that's the part that I don't do very often. That's all screwed shut. And um, I'll get my screwdriver out. That's how I discovered. I, I barely ever took the bottom off to do, to do the bottom. I always just kind of, once I started oiling, I just so oiled the side and the top. But once I uh, finally opened up that bottom, that's where I discovered that my belt, like the, the motor belt, was just broken. It, it's kind of like this rubber almost, like this hard rubber. And the core of it must be thread because a, a part like this big of the rubber was gone, just deteriorated, just gone. And there was frayed little bits of thread left. So it would stitch like, through one loop until it got to it and then it would just go and I couldn't figure out what was wrong and I could turn it a few times the wheel and then it would go again but that's what was happening it was stopping at that little um, thread area and then going around once and then stopping and then I'd have to turn it again go around once turn it well figured that out why I was doing that uh, I opened the bottom and parts of the belt started falling falling out on me like, eh, there's my problem. I was looking at the top. I'm like, what's causing this? And it was on the bottom. So should have been oiling down there too. I would have seen it, you know, ages earlier. But yeah, so we'll, we'll even take the bottom off and, and check it all out. Do the whole process. So I was going to do that tonight, but I figured, you know, I want to move the table, my, my um, sewing, my uh, extension table here and move all the rulers out of the way and maybe clean up this area a little bit. And then we'll just focus on that tomorrow. Then on Monday, we can get all set to start, uh, start this whole process again, but for the chevrons going in the, the other direction. Good Friday thing to do, clean up, clean up the machine, preparing for the week ahead. I think that'll be good. Ooh, I, and for the, the hedgehog wall hanging that I showed you guys uh, a couple days ago, all I have to do now on that besides the binding is I have to um, just do some straight line stitching in the border. So maybe with the machine all cleaned and ready to go, maybe this weekend and nothing on the machine, like no project, um, maybe I can quick do those borders before we jump into the chevrons again. Ooh, I like that idea. I could potentially finish a project that this weekend. That would be something. <laughs> That'd be pretty nice. How does it do with free motion? So Robin, I have done a little test with the free motion. I have a free motion foot uh, with, with this Kenmore here that I, that I got, uh, or a darning foot, it's the same thing. And uh, I did test it on a little square like this big and it seemed to work and I am super stoked about it. Um, so now my machine, this Kenmore, does not have a huge neck area or throat. I think that's what it's called, right? A throat. 
Uh, it's not huge, and that's that and the fact that I'm working on a tiny table here. Those are my biggest worries about this free motion quilting. It's the management of the quilt as I quilt. Like, what am I going to do with all that bulk? That's that's what I'm worried about. So that'll be that'll most likely be challenge number one. Um, although we talked about last night, I do want to sew the zigzags first, just as straight lines. You know, so just sewing these zigzags just in the in the ditch here in the seam, um, uh, just on the quilt before I start doing the free motion stuff within. Uh, the chevron. I think that will hold it down a little bit. So doing all those chevrons first on the on the big quilt will help me get a feel of, okay, this is what it's going to be like dealing with this big quilt in a more controlled environment of just doing straight lines. Well, that's a good idea. Um, maybe, you know, I this is a this table does expand. It has leaves, so I have them going out this way right now, but I could rotate the table to have it go out this way, and then there would be more room for the quilt. I like that idea. Yeah, I think I think that's a great idea, Joe. Used to oil your singer, but this one says not to oil it. Oh, that's interesting. You'll change the needle and clean out the bobbin area. That's a good plan. Do you have a newer machine? Do newer machines, maybe you don't oil them as much, or I guess I don't know how all that works. But mine has uh, definitely seemed a bit happier now that I've started to oil it and clean it and change the needle more often. I didn't know all those things uh, before, but now I'm doing, doing a whole lot more sewing since these Facebook Lives and, uh, and uh, just the live video in general. Uh, and I'm learning so much from you guys. <laughs> you guys are teaching me the ropes. Uh, all the places where I could be improving. Um, I've been learning a lot from your guys' tips. Oop, let's get that guy a little bit here. Ooh, that's hot. There we go. Oh, it's a newer brother. That's cool. That's... It's nice to have a machine that you love, for sure. Man, I love the I, the idea of a new machine. I think that'd be fun, but... Man, I don't know. This Kenmore has been lasting me a long time, and... In my brain, like, this is just... It's, it can't happen, but in my brain, if I'm gonna be spending... You know, $10,000 on a super sweet machine... Um, right now, I think I would put that to a long arm machine, just because they're... So fun, and I want one for no reason, <laughs> and I have zero room for it. Uh, but I love the idea of having a free motion quilting machine, or a, a um, long arm, a long arm machine. I think I think I was saying free motion machine, but a long arm quilting machine. Um, <laughs> I don't know where it'd go. It'd go like in the bedroom or something. There's no place for it. Uh, but I love the idea of just getting to play on that and I don't know. I probably wouldn't even like it, who knows. <laughs> but yeah, so if I was going to invest in a, like a major machine, then, then I kind of want, I would, you know, my brain would start going in that direction. Oh, computerized machines don't require oiling. Oh, I wonder why. That's interesting. You'd think it, you know, it's still something with a motor, a motor and like parts, right? Hmm. Interesting. You're thinking of going from a four inch embroidery machine, ooh, to a five inch hoop machine. That's awesome. Oh, that, well, see, that's the other option. I, I didn't even think about that. You know, getting a machine that does uh, uh, machine embroidery. I have, I have a really cheap one of those. And it's fun to play around with, but it'd be fun to have like an intense one of a that can do machine embroidery stuff. I have a machine embroidery design program, and I've actually designed a few things in there, um, which has been really fun. I could see doing more of that, and then I just kind of test it out on on my little machine, or you know, it's just made for like baby quilts and 
I made some Christmas gifts with them once, so I haven't gotten way into that either, but I could see getting there. Man, I don't know though, I think I'd still go for the long arm quilting machine before a sweet embroidery machine, machine embroidery machine. Yeah, they're probably take up a whole room. Yep, and they, they don't come apart like a small machine, that's for sure. That's true, Jenna. That, oh, I, that's really interesting. Yeah, if you could rent, rent or like lease a long arm quilting machine for like a few months just to see if you like it and then return it or something. That'd be pretty neat. It's a potential for a business right there, just renting out your machine. If you get good at taking it uh, or like putting it together and taking it apart or something and can, yeah, I don't know. That'd be tough. I don't know how all that would work. Be pretty cool though. Oh yeah, that's true. A lot of, uh, a lot of places, a lot of um, quilt shops and sewing centers and stuff, they have long arms that you can rent. A lot of times you have to take a class to, um, so they can train you how to do it all. And then, then after that, um, you could just rent out the time and it's, you know, by the hour or something usually, I think. But yeah, that'd be a good way to, to decide. And you know, if you're not doing tons of quilts, if you're just, if you just need one done and yeah, that would be the way to do it, I think. If you just wanted to try it. Yeah, I, I mean, I've tried some at trade shows and stuff before, but that's not the same as, you know, what renting it would be where you can actually work on your quilt and, and um, as if it's almost like, you know, what it would be like if you had the machine at your house or something, you know? I don't think you can get that at a trade show. But it's sure, sure fun to grab the handlebars and move it around a little bit. <laughs> draw some draw some shapes and write some words and all that. Exactly, Deborah. They're hoping that you rent it out so often there that you think, this is ridiculous. I should just buy my own and I should buy it from this store that probably sells them. That's what they're going for. which seems like good thinking. We're in one of those never ending pile situations here tonight with all these half chevrons, but we're gonna get there. I would like to finish these tonight so I can have them in one nice stack and then I can clean up this whole area and get ready for um, cleaning the machine. Puzzles everywhere. I can't wait to start laying this out. I think the red's gonna just really pop more than what I think it's going to, and uh, I'm kind of excited about that. Oh, that's you're scared about getting hooked on the long arm, so you're trying to learn the free motion quilting first. I'm just trying to, I want to learn the free motion quilting first just to see if I'm interested in it at all. Like, you know, some people just have a knack or like a real love for the shapes, like the, the, um, the, the movements and, and like the different shapes, like the feathers and, you know, of course all that takes practice, but you know, I don't know, my mom's really good at not getting stuck in the corner. That's what I feel like I'm gonna get, like, um, I'm not good at continuous line thinking. <laughs> uh, so I don't know, maybe, maybe after some practice, it'll just be like, oh, I get it. My brain just has to do this. Then I'm, then I got the connected line at all times thing going, but I don't know. That's dilemma number two after uh, dilemma number one, which was how to manage the bulk. <laughs> yeah, I love this, just this red against the purple too. I think, I think that's fun. We, we ran out of patterned stuff here. So I had this purple nearby and I thought it looked pretty with the red and with all the rest of um, these colors we got going on. 
and I think it's gonna be fun. Practice on doodling on paper, yeah. That's, that's the trick. I just don't think I have the patience for that. <laughs> I'm the, I'm just horrible. Like, I hate practicing. I just want to jump in. Like, the jumping into me, that's the practice. So, I'm okay with having it be looking real crappy and then hopefully get better. Uh, that's, that's my practice. I think, but with the paper, I do think, um, while we're working on it here, um, you know, before I just start, I will have a little piece of paper nearby, maybe even a scrap, a scrap, um, a scrap piece of fabric or a scrap sandwiched, um, like mini quilt block sort of thing. Um, I, I will practice before getting going like, oh, okay, so this is a swirl and this is kind of what they're having me do. Okay, I think I got that. I'll practice on the paper, then on, if I think I need practice on the machine, then I'll do it with that little swatch and then we'll jump on it. So it's not that I'm not gonna practice, I'm just gonna practice it and then do it right away. I'm not gonna sit around, you know, and watch TV and just practice my motions. Like a calligrapher, that's what they do. <laughs> that's why I don't think I could, I love calligraphy and I love the idea of working on letter forms over and over again, but oh God, I, I, I don't think I could, I don't think my brain can deal with, I think the patience. <clears throat> that's probably involved with that. <laughs> but I have a feeling it's a lot like that. Sitting down and like calligraphy, learning learning each shape, each, you know, for a feather or something, like practicing each, you know, loop-de-loop -loop and whatever. And where to go next and all that. Kind of like practicing calligraphy, I think. Don't make your sandwich too small. Make it at least 12 or 18 inches so you have room to practice several designs. Ooh, that's a good idea. Deborah. I think that's, that's a great idea. We'll do that for sure. So maybe I'll have some extra fabric when we're done. I have to make the back of this quilt yet too. Um, I think maybe we'll just try and do something quick. Not like my Splendid Sampler where I, I did all of that... Um, Improv piecing, which took forever, which I loved. It was so much fun, but you know, it took us a while to actually get quilting on on that. So I'll I'll do like maybe just a solid back, or we do have a bunch of scraps, so it'd be fun to sew the scraps together quick. Well, I guess we're in improv piecing land again. Then I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to gather gather what's left over from here. I always kind of like the idea of I didn't get this flat. I like the idea of getting all the fabric used up in the quilt. I think that's kind of neat. So all the scraps are in the back and I don't really have scraps for, you know, another project. It's just all used up in the quilt. I kind of like that idea. So I don't know. But maybe for the sake of speed, I will just do like a solid back or something. I think that might actually look really pretty too. Or if we have a chevron left over throw that in the back and have the rest be solid or something. We'll see. Or maybe it could just be like the purple and red like stripes, like circus stripes or something. That'd be kind of fun. Way to mix it up a little bit. Oh, I think our stack's getting a little smaller here. I took your practice sandwich and cut it up and made mug rugs. Oh, Deborah, that's a great idea. Oh, I like that. Yeah, so we should pick, you know, something we'd want to do that with, like, you know, more of this red. I could see having a bunch of, like, coasters and stuff out of, out of this red to have around the house. That'd be kind of fun. I like that idea. I like it a lot, that idea. Yeah, and then just sew another square to it and turn it right side out. So we're on the edge, then you don't have to do a binding or anything. I, I like that idea. That's, that's the plan. We're gonna, our practice piece is gonna turn into some coasters, I think. I like it.
Alright. Puzzle. Oh, if you some extra squares, you'll use. Yeah, I think I'll just sandwich up. Maybe I'll do um, I'll do a sandwich with red on one side and then the batting and then purple on the other side. So then, um, you know, you can flip the coasters whatever direction you want. And it'll either be that red or, or purple. That, that'd be fun. I like that idea. I still have both fabrics out here. I don't have them put away yet. And in my brain, I was putting them away <laughs> this weekend, so I will, I'll leave them out. I'll just leave it out till this project's done. That's probably the smart idea. If your fabric is a plain color, it will show all the stitching. Uh, if you have a small print, it won't show much. So, Patricia, I think that is my, um, that is why for this chevron, for the quilt, I think I'm going to leave the red areas blank. I'm not going to quilt on them except for um, except for in the ditch. So I will I'll sew in the ditch. Maybe later I'll I'll add like a little edge to it like a, you know, like a a half inch in or something. I think that might be kind of fun just so I still have a little straight line here. So stitch in the ditch for sure and then maybe a straight line in the red. Let's get that other one up here. Um, my one that goes the other direction. So I'll do the zigzag just uh, in the ditch for sure, just straight. And then maybe I'll do one extra one in the red. But other than that, I think the red is going to stay blank. So it'll be kind of poofed up because of the, the batting will be underneath. And then I think I'm going to do the free motion stuff in the pattern zigzag. And exactly for that re reason, uh, Patricia, is that um, I might get away with a lot more because you won't be able to see the stitching as well. Uh, you know, and like I said, I'm, I'm okay with seeing how bad the stitching is going to start out with. I'm not, I'm fine with that. I want to see improvement, but not everyone needs to see that. <laughs> you know, I can know it's there in the patterned fabric. Um, I don't have to have it, you know, so obvious in, in the solids area. So um, I think that's the plan for this. For the little mug rugs, I don't care. Um, I think that's kind of, I don't care if um, you see the stitches or not. I think that'll be kind of part of the charm of it a little bit. That it, that I can say, oh, those are my tester pieces. Yeah, Patricia, I think that's why this quilt in particular, this charming chevrons quilt, is especially good, um, you know, this is just my thought um, that it's going to be especially good for learning how to how to free motion quilt because I can hide stuff in the little pattern area and I'm only working in these little spaces so I can just I can practice just like going the up and down or I can practice a swirl and getting in and out of places or even you know that swirl that goes back and forth you know That'll be something. Or, you know, what do we do when we get to this corner here? You know, it, it has opportunity for us to think about things and try things um, in a small space where we don't ever have to do it again if we don't want to. Um, you know, because the next Chevron down, we'll do something totally different if we feel like it. It's kind of up for grabs. Just It's like a sampler almost. A sampler where we can just play and learn. And, you know, if I'm... if if we try one design and man, we're just not doing well at it, but towards the end of the zigzag, maybe we're starting to get a handle on it, then I'm perfectly fine with starting the next zigzag and keeping on with that, that one. Because, you know, if we're seeing improvement, then I wanna, I want, and, and if I'm seeing improvement, but I'm just not quite there yet, but I think I could be after one more zigzag, I'm gonna do another zigzag with that same design. And then the next zigzag I can do something totally different. I'm not married to any, any, you know, like I have to do them in this order and I have to start with circles and end up with intricate feathers. You know, I'm not, not sold on, on all that. It's going to be just free for all, whatever, wherever learning, um, is going to take us. It's, it's very much going to be an education project for me. <laughs> uh, trying, trying it in the wild. Uh, free motion quilting. So I'm I'm really excited to get 
to that part. So this project was about that for me, learning the free motion quilting, and it was an opportunity for me to use some of my favorite fabrics that have been on my shelf, some of them for like a decade. Um, just looking too pretty, I couldn't, couldn't do it. So is the L, the curse of L, when you just go back and forth like this? I think that's awfully pretty. You know what, it might actually, talking about calligraphy, I was just talking earlier how it's kind of like practicing free motion quilting the lines has got to be a lot like practicing calligraphy. That might not be a bad idea to actually look up some calligraphy, like some flourishes, you know, flourishes on, on calligraphy. Those I bet would be great as free motion quilting, like just pretty. I mean, the, the difference is that, you know, we have to, we can't lift up and start somewhere else. I mean, you could, but ideally we'll have one continuous, continuous line everywhere. Um, but I think, I think there's maybe some clues in calligraphy to some, to some fun stuff we could be trying. We'll start simple though first. <laughs> we'll just try like going up and down and up and down first probably. And then maybe some, some meandering, and then uh, uh, maybe some swirls. We'll start there, and then we'll, um, we'll kick it up a notch, hopefully, if things are going well. I do want to try some of the, the heftier things. Like, I do want to try, you know, some feathers and, and some troubly kind of ones. Or if there's, if there's um, a certain free motion squiggle or design that you're having trouble with or something, um, I'd love to hear and we'll try and give that a try, see if we can break it down and, and make it work for us. I'm all, I'm all up to, for that too. Ooh, initials, oh, see, there's that too. So we can actually draw on the fabric. We don't have to do this all by eye, eyeballing it. We can draw the design on our chevron before quilting it and I'm, I'm thinking, Maybe not for the beginner stuff, but definitely, you know, if we're going to start playing around with feather designs and all that, um, I'll want to practice by, yeah, drawing it on with chalk or a water-soluble marker or something beforehand. It's a good idea, Patricia. Yeah, um, my, uh, my um, initials would probably be pretty good for it, just A and a T. A T you could do, the T could be like a figure eight, like four leaf clovery thing. See, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need a lot of help. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm a little afraid of. I don't know how to connect all these things. I'll get, I, I have a feeling I'm gonna get stuck and I'm not gonna know how to get myself out of it, you know? <laughs> uh, Cause there's, there's some tricks, I think. You know, it looks like you're making a circle, but it's actually, you know, a whole pile of different things, you know, and how, how it's constructed so you can get out at the end. Like, so you're not stuck at the beginning, you want to be at the, the other side of your shape so you can do the next shape. Those, those sort of tricks. I'm going to get stuck in the corner a lot, I think. But we're going to try. <laughs> Feel free to laugh at me while I do it. That's okay. But yeah, that's, I think that's my fear is just getting stuck in a shape and then not knowing how to get over to the other side where I need to be. <laughs> that's the mystery for me. Whenever I see people free motion quilting or quilting on the long arm, that's, that's the most impressive thing to me is like, how are they going to get out of this shape and make it be pretty and have it go well next to the shape next to it and, and still not be stuck in the corner, be like going in the direction that they want to be to fill this up or, or they filled up this whole area, but they still managed to not forget about this area there. How do they move, maneuver back over there? And I don't know, we'll see. Oh, you have a few books with easy designs. Yeah, I might have to, I'm gonna have to dig into Krista's book, the, the machine quilting with style book again. Um, she probably has some tips in here, but she has, you know, some free motion. You know, look at there, we got the swirls and stuff going. We're gonna have to try that. So she definitely has 
tips, um, tips in this, you know, here we go, like start, you know, we can just try things like that. Some easy, easy ones and we're, we'll work our way, work our way up to some of the fancy stuff. I'm super excited though. They echo a lot. See, that's, that's, that's it, Bonnie. I think, I think I got to just feel the echo of it all. We're going to do it. I'm, I'm stoked. Yeah. I mean, technically they can cross, uh, Mary, like they don't, that's not like a hard rule or anything that your lines can't cross, but it's the idea that, you know, we got ourselves into this shape, but we're still making it pretty and we're still extending this way and this way and this way. We're not, we're not backing ourselves into a corner. Like we ended up here and now we have no way to get back over here. Um, without like crossing over lines. Like that's, you know, that's what I don't want to have happen. But I'm sure, you know, sure it'll happen once or twice. Luckily we are confined to these chevrons, so there's not many places to go. So I'm going to have to get out of my shape real quick. Um, you know, I won't get stuck in a whole square somewhere. So I think that'll be beneficial. Oh, you have two of Chris's book. You went through both and drew in a sketchbook for all the different designs. Ooh, that's a great idea. Oh, yes. So it's a whole different world if you're entering into a quilt show. Um, everything's a whole different world if you're entering into uh, like a highly juried quilt show that's based on um, every little thing being like quilt police perfect. Um, my quilts, they will not ever be in one of those. Uh, yeah, then, then you gotta get real picky with how you're doing, doing your stuff for sure. And that is not for everyone for sure. That's different than one where you're just doing like a really beautiful design and it doesn't matter so much how you bound it or, or any of those things or how you pieced it or that you're, that you don't have a, you've clipped a corner or something like that. Um, there are shows like that too, that it's more about the art and the innovation and, and all that of the design. But there's others that it is all about everything. Every stitch is perfect and every corner is perfect and, and all that. So there's, there's something for everyone for sure. You do have to spend a little time planning out which way you're going. <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm a little scared of, but yeah. So we're not going to just jump in. We will kind of be like, okay, I can go here. And what do I do when I get to a corner? Okay, we'll do this. And then, you know, then we'll do it. So we'll think about it beforehand for sure. Try and come up with a solution. And, you know, at, at, uh, you know, and if we still can't figure it out, then do it. We'll actually draw it on and, and, um, follow it follow our line. Uh, Diana, for this project, and uh, um, this is what Krista, who is the designer, this is what she prefers in general, I believe as well. But for this project, she says to do press every seam open like this. And it is so the whole thing is more equalized, really. So there's not like three layers of fabric on this side and only one here, or at least making it equal. So two are here and two are here. So um, that's less of a leap to jump, like to three layers of fabric than to one. Um, she does recommend it if you're doing free motion quilting to, to press the seams flat. I don't know how I feel about all that, but since I haven't done the free motion quilting before, I'm going to take the tips and you know, this isn't, this is, this is not my pattern and I like, I like learning from other designers and other patterns that I use. So, um, in this pattern, it says to press it open and I'm going to press it open and see, see how I feel about it. But yes, uh, I believe, yeah, she says to press them all open. But yeah, if you guys have not got your pattern yet and you're wanting to try this out, um, for sure, um, go grab yours. It's the Charming Chevrons. She does have by Krista Quilts. Um, she does have a digital version as well if you don't like the paper one. Although the paper booklet is, it's really high quality. It's actually a very nice pattern. So I do recommend uh, 
grabbing yours of that yet. We will be here for a while. So you will definitely be able to catch up if you get started on it. Well, it's the jump right here. So like now, if I have it just to the side here, if I'm going like this, if I'm sewing across here, then I'm all of a sudden going from like one layer, you know, the batting will be underneath, but I'm going from one layer and then you're kind of, there, there's more of a bump right here because I got to jump up to three layers. And here, this is the side that the seam is on. Uh, you know, see, it's right, right there. So I, I'm hitting that bump. Um, I'm not sure if it really makes a difference, but I get that. I mean, that makes sense that, oh yeah, there's a, there'd be a little bit more of a bump there. But yeah, I mean, once you get to the corners, that's going to be awfully bulky in general. Um, this is, you know, a lot of people like pressing open and a lot of people don't. So um, I don't usually. So I'm, I'm having an open mind and I'm going to give it a try for this, especially since I have not done the free motion before. So if she says this works better, I'm going to give it a try. And I'm sure on another quilt, I probably won't press it open and we'll see which way felt better sort of thing. But this time I am, I'm going with it and pressing them all open. One more after this, then we're done. Oh, wow. Good timing, man. This worked out just right. Yeah, so I will clean all this up tomorrow and we will clean the machine up tomorrow. We will oil and we'll dust it all off. We'll brush it all out and I will, I will unscrew the whole thing and we will, we will um, oil all the parts. So last time after I did bring it in to um, get fixed to get that new belt on he tightened the wheel so much that i couldn't unscrew you know you you unscrew the one wheel so that when you're doing the bobbin your needle isn't going up and down i haven't been able to unscrew that so maybe after i take the machine apart maybe i'll be able to figure out how to loosen that up too because that's annoying um i'm on the cotton setting um of my iron which is the hottest and i'm doing that just because i'm using i'm using cotton fabric here. I don't have any steam in it. Um, I didn't starch it either. I could probably have starched this. If I would starch it now though, I think I would stretch out my shapes too much and um, I don't want to do that right now. When you make miniature quilts, oh you open out the seam allowances too, less bulk. Oh interesting Patricia. That's good to know. All right, here is our stack of half chevrons. Oh, actually, this isn't the whole stack. This is just what we did tonight. We have ugh, all of these as well. So let's let's put the ones we did tonight on the top. Oop, lost one there. They get scooched down after a while here. Okay, so these are all the chevrons that are going in this direction. So. Uh, like I said, tomorrow we'll clean the machine, but on Monday, let me just grab this. Monday, we have a whole other pile, just like what we had before, where we have to cut down the middle and then trim our half square triangles again. There we go. Our, our, we got a half square triangle that we'll have to trim. So the same thing that we did with these, but now we'll be going, we'll be sewing them in the other direction. So no matter which way you turn, it's always going to be the other direction. Um, so yeah, then we'll get the V's. So we, we are halfway done with our chevron V's, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Uh, but it will be more of the same here. We will be um, trimming and then doing our chain piecing like what we did tonight, but yeah, just in the other direction. So, all right, guys, uh, I'm going to flip you around and we'll finish it up tonight. Hello, hello again. So I am excited. Uh, Monday, we'll get going on these. Oh, it feels good to have that stack done. It feels like something that we checked off the list, a whole, a whole stage of this done, even though we'll be doing basically the same thing. 
uh, starting next week, but it's still, it's a new thing. <laughs> we got them going the other direction. So here is the pattern again. If you're interested, it's by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. And if you just came in in the middle, I am Alyssa Thomas, and I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So I will be here again tomorrow, uh, and then back again on Monday. And you can get the replay of this at Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube, and I'll get that up there tonight, and it will also stay here on the Penguin and Fish page on Facebook. So thanks again, guys. It was great chit-chatting with you again. Uh, share your photos in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. I would love to see where, where you guys are all at with this. And I will catch you tomorrow. Well, let's clean the machine. All right, guys. See you later. Good night.